Maria Montessori was born in the town of Chiara Valle, Italy, on August 31, 1870. She was born to wealthy, older Italian parents. Her father, Alessandro Montessori, was a conservative military gentleman. At age 33, he was a successful government official involved in the financial management of the state-run tobacco industry. At this time in his life, he met and married Rinalde Stopani, a well-educated woman, eight years his junior from a landed family. Rinalde was a woman open to the changes of Italy, especially for women, and she appeared to have had both strength and discipline. As a couple, they were devoted to both the Catholic religion and to the ideals of liberation and union for Italy. At the age of five, Maria's family moved to Rome when her father accepted a new job and a position as an accountant first class. In a larger town like Rome, Maria would be able to go to school beyond third grade. As a school-aged child, Maria was described as self-confident, strong-willed, and a little smug. One of the stories retold by her devotees is one of seriously ill 10-year-old Maria who says to her mother, Do not worry, mother. I cannot die. I have too much to do. Because Maria had developed such a passionate interest in mathematics at age 12, she decided to pursue technical school. Technical school consisted of seven years of a modern curriculum and was not a typical path for girls. The school taught a body of facts, techniques, and skills in a very punitive atmosphere. The technical schools insisted upon regular attendance, physical immobility, and the material was learned at the same pace by passive students. Luckily for the school-aged Maria, even though many girls did not choose technical school over a classical education, there was a rage for education in New Italy the role of women was beginning to change, and she was encouraged by her mother to break the stereotyped role. Maria completed technical school in 1890. Her father assumed Maria would want to become a teacher, but Maria refused. Although her favorite subject in school was mathematics, and many of the other technical students went on to pursue a profession in engineering, Maria now followed her interest in biological sciences, and on her own intuition, she went on to study medicine. In 1890, Maria Montessori met with the professor of clinical medicine at the University of Rome. He refused her plan to apply to medical school. Montessori later recalled that they had a pleasant talk, and when she got up to leave, she shook his hand and said to him, I know I will become a doctor. She enrolled into the University of Rome that fall. When she passed her final examinations in the spring of 1892, she was eligible, except for the fact that she was a woman, to begin the study of medicine. Even though her father was opposed to her choice to study medicine, she was unperturbed by his disapproval, and with the support of her mother, Maria persisted until she was accepted into medical school. Being the first woman in her field made her stand out initially. But after time, attention became more focused on the quality of her work. Through scholarships, Maria was able to pay most of her own way through medical school. Her fellow male students resented her at first, but her response was to accept this as a challenge to overcome through patient and persistent effort. She felt no rivalry with them and continued to dress and behave socially in a feminine way. In her struggles through medical school, Maria continued to believe she was there for some kind of mystic purpose and that she had a destiny to fulfill. She was offered a professional position as soon as she graduated in 1896. She accepted a position as assistant at San Giovanni Hospital, which was attached to the university where she would work alongside her teachers, who were now her colleagues. Two months after graduating medical school, Montessori was chosen to represent Italy at the International Women's Conference in Berlin. She lectured on the rights of working women and proposed equal pay for equal work. She said that to the women of Italy, class differences did not exist. What mattered was the struggle for rights for all women. She immediately became a feminist spokesperson in Italy. In 1897, Maria Montessori was given the responsibility to visit the Rome Asylums for the Insane. While there, she observed, 
the idiot children. Her interest in diseases of children, relieving human suffering, and commitment to social reform motivated her to read what she could about mentally defective children. Her study of these children led her to the works of Jean-Marc Gaspard Itard and his disciple, Edouard Seguin. In one of Seguin's work, Maria found an answer she was looking for when he said that he believed these children could be helped by special methods of education. They would not be cured in hospitals. They needed to be trained in schools. At this time, Montessori began to focus on the study of education. She read all of the major works on educational theory and began to develop a theory of her own. An influential Italian anthropologist during Maria Montessori's day was Cesare Lombroso. Lombroso insisted that prisons and reformatories did not cure criminality. He believed that it was necessary to discover the causes and remedies, and the way to do this was through study of the individual. Lombroso's work was significant to Montessori because she agreed that the emphasis on solving the problem was through observation rather than theorizing. In 1898, Montessori writes an article called Social Miseries and New Scientific Discoveries for a political magazine called Roma. She referenced the article in speeches she gave on lecture tours called Modern Charity. The topic suggests that educators should shift the focus of education to the child. She suggested that new methods should be tried for the education of deficient children in Italy and that methods were being used in other places in the world with impressive results. Another speech that referenced her article that she gave on her tours was called The New Woman in which she reviews past and current theories about the inferiority of women. She approached the subject with humor and in the end conveyed that she believed the woman of the future would have equal rights as well as equal duties. Proceeds from her lectures either benefited a local cause or went to raise funds for the League for Children with Deficiencies. During these lectures, the interested public turned out to see the beautiful scholar they had read about. Upon her return to Rome, she found herself to be a well-known public figure. By the spring of 1900, the League had opened a school in Rome to train teachers in the care and education of deficient children. Montessori was appointed director of the school, and her colleague and research associate at the psychiatric clinic, Dr. Montesano, was appointed co-director of the school. The institution was known as the Orthophrenic School. Montessori spent two years evolving and training teachers in a special method of observation and education of feeble-minded children. She studied methods used by earlier predecessors in medicine, education, and anthropology from the works of Edouard Sagan, Friedrich Froebel, and Giuseppe Serge. The materials and methods Montessori developed and used during this time were later adapted for use with normal children. Montessori believed that we should really find the way to teach the child how before making him execute a task. She believed that the way to teach a skill was not by having the child 